September 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 37 through 39 of the Old Testament. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and went to the Lord's temple. Eliakim, the palace supervisor, Shebna, the scribe, and the leading priests, clothed in sackcloth, sent this message to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz. This is what Hezekiah says. This is a day of distress, insults, and humiliation, as when a baby is ready to leave the birth canal, but the mother lacks the strength to push it through. Perhaps the Lord your God will hear all these things the chief advisor has spoken on behalf of his master, the king of Assyria, who sent him to taunt the living God. When the Lord your God hears, perhaps he will punish him for the things he has said. So pray for this remnant that remains. When King Hezekiah's servants came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master this, this is what the Lord says. Don't be afraid because of the things you have heard. These insults the king of Assyria's servants have hurled against me. Look, I will take control of his mind. He will receive a report and return to his own land. I will cut him down with a sword in his own land. When the chief advisor heard the king of Assyria had departed from Lachish, he left and went to Libna, where the king was campaigning. The king heard that King Terheka of Ethiopia was marching out to fight him. He again sent messengers to Hezekiah, ordering them, Tell King Hezekiah of Judah this, Don't let your God in whom you trust mislead you when he says, Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Certainly you have heard how the kings of Assyria have annihilated all lands. Do you really think you will be rescued? Were the nations whom my predecessors destroyed, the nations of Gozan, Haran, Reseph, and the people of Eden and Telassar, rescued by their gods? Where are the kings of Hamath, the king of Arpad, and the kings of Lair, Sepharvaim, Hena and Iva. Hezekiah took the letter from the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. O Lord who commands armies, O God of Israel, who is enthroned on the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You made the sky and the earth. Pay attention, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and observe. Listen to this entire message Sennacherib sent and how he taunts the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all the nations and their lands. They have burned the gods of the nations, for they are not really gods, but only the product of human hands manufactured from wood and stone. That is why the Assyrians could destroy them. Now, O Lord, our God, Rescue us from his power so all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. Isaiah, son of Amos, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. Because you prayed to me concerning King Sennacherib of Assyria, this is what the Lord says about him. The virgin daughter Zion despises you. She makes fun of you. Daughter Jerusalem shakes her head after you. Whom have you taunted and hurled insults at? At whom have you shouted and looked so arrogantly at the Holy One of Israel? Through your messengers you taunted the Sovereign Master. With my many chariots I climbed up the high mountains, the slopes of Lebanon. I cut down its tall cedars and its best evergreens. I invaded its most remote regions, its thickest woods. I dug wells and drank water with the soles of my feet. I dried up all the rivers of Egypt. Certainly you must have heard. Long ago I worked it out. In ancient times I planned it. And now I am bringing it to pass. The plan is this. Fortified cities will crash into heaps of ruins. The residents are powerless. They are terrified and ashamed. They are as short-lived as plants in the field or green vegetation. They are as short-lived as grass on the rooftops when it is scorched by the east wind. I know where you live and everything you do, and how you rage against me. Because you rage against me and the uproar you created has reached my ears, 
I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle between your lips, and I will lead you back the way you came. This will be your reminder that I have spoken the truth. This year you will eat what grows wild, and next year what grows on its own. But the year after that, you will plant seed and harvest crops. You will plant vines and consume their produce. Those who remain in Judah will take root in the ground and bear fruit. For a remnant will leave Jerusalem. Survivors will come out of Mount Zion. The intense devotion of the Lord who commands armies will accomplish this. So this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. He will not enter the city, nor will he shoot an arrow here. He will not attack it with his shielded warriors, nor will he build siege works against it. He will go back the way he came. He will not enter the city, says the Lord. I will shield the city and rescue it for the sake of my reputation and because of my promise to David, my servant. The Lord's messenger went out and killed 185,000 troops in the Assyrian camp. When they got up early the next morning, there were all the corpses. So King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and went on his way. He went home and stayed in Nineveh. One day, as he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adremelech and Sherezer struck him down with the sword. They ran away to the land of Ararat. His son, Ezar Hadden, replaced him as king. In those days, Hezekiah was stricken with a terminal illness. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz, visited him and told him, This is what the Lord says. Give instructions to your household, for you are about to die. You will not get well. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, remember how I have served you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and how I have carried out your will. Then Hezekiah wept bitterly. The Lord told Isaiah, Go and tell Hezekiah, This is what the Lord God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Look, I will add 15 years to your life and rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will shield this city. Isaiah ordered, Let them take a fig cake and apply it to the ulcerated sore, and he will get well. Hezekiah said, What is the confirming sign that I will go up to the Lord's temple? Isaiah replied, This is your sign from the Lord, confirming that the Lord will do what he has said. Look, I will make the shadow go back ten steps on the stairs of Ahaz. And then the shadow went back ten steps. This is the prayer of King Hezekiah of Judah when he was sick and then recovered from his illness. I thought, in the middle of my life I must walk through the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the rest of my years. I thought, I will no longer see the Lord in the land of the living. I will no longer look on humankind with the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling place is removed and taken away from me like a shepherd's tent. I rolled up my life like a weaver rolls cloth. From the loom he cuts me off. You turn day into night and end my life. I cry out until morning like a lion he shatters all my bones. You turn day into night and end my life. Like a swallow or a thrush I chirp. I coo like a dove my eyes grow tired from looking up to the sky. O oh, sovereign master I am oppressed. Help me. What can I say he has decreed and acted? I will walk slowly all my years, because I am overcome with grief. O Sovereign Master, your decrees can give men life. May years of life be restored to me, restore my health, and preserve my life. Look, the grief I experienced was for my benefit. You delivered me from the pit of oblivion, for you removed all my sins from your sight. Indeed, Sheol does not give you thanks. Death does not praise you. Those who descend into the pit do not anticipate your faithfulness. The living person, the living person, he gives you thanks as I do today. A father tells his sons about your faithfulness. The Lord is about to deliver me and we will celebrate with music for the rest of our lives in the Lord's temple. At that time, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a gift to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been ill and had recovered. Hezekiah welcomed them and showed them his storehouse with its silver, gold, spices, and high-quality olive oil, as well as his whole armory and everything in his treasuries. Hezekiah showed them everything in his palace and in his whole kingdom. 
Isaiah the prophet visited King Hezekiah and asked him, What did these men say? Where do they come from? Hezekiah replied, They come from the distant land of Babylon. Isaiah asked, What have they seen in your palace? Hezekiah replied, They have seen everything in my palace. I showed them everything in my treasuries. Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to the word of the Lord who commands armies. Look, a time is coming when everything in your palace and the things your ancestors have accumulated to this day will be carried away to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own descendants whom you father will be taken away and will be made eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The Lord's word which you have announced is appropriate. Then he thought, For there will be peace and stability during my lifetime. God, we, we shake our heads at the story of Hezekiah. Um, he does some things right, some things wrong. <laughs> but we're so much like Hezekiah. Um, you know, his, his dad Amos didn't want to see that sign. That, that sign of proof that you offered him. And, and here we see Hezekiah asking for double signs from you just to make sure. And I do that all the time trying to make sure I'm doing what is right, but also um, not quite sure of my relationship with you and kind of filling out those boundaries. Hezekiah was only, from what we understand, only about 39 years old when he um, was told that he was going to die. And and I, sus I suspect that a lot of us at that age would say, oh, I don't want to leave. You know, I have my family. I possibly have my kids. I have my my life around me. I don't want to, I don't want to die. And you graciously, not because of his selfishness, but because of your own power and sovereignty, allowed him another uh, 15, uh, 15 years on to that 39 at that time. And, you know, it, initially he comes out praising you. And so we do get that right. Sometimes we, <laughs> sometimes uh, we remember to thank you for the gifts and the blessings that you give us. But pretty soon he was back to his old selfishness of, um, look at me, it's all about me, and, and showing them his incredible riches, which we know will soon be plundered away from his his kingdom. And reading the story, I always like kind of shake my head, like, Hezekiah, don't you know better? Uh, but for us, it's probably a little bit more um, hindsight is twenty twenty, and knowing that Hezekiah is just, just causing all sorts of problems for him. But yeah, we don't have that same hindsight in our own lives. We just seem to continue to cause our own problems and walk into those situations. Uh, and we don't have somebody in our life usually who's saying, hey, watch out, don't go down that path. Or if we do, we tend not to listen to them. So God, help us as we're reading these stories that you meant for us here in today's current times. Help make sure that we understand that they're relevant, that we're not just kind of looking at them with a judging or judgmental slant or filter to them, but we're understanding they're there for a reason. They're really truly showing reflections of various facets of our lives and how you want us to actually respond to you and not respond to you correctly. Um, unlike many people did in the Bible, but the more I read the Bible, the more I seem to relate with the people who, who always seem to get it wrong. So God, allow us to see ourselves in these stories, um, not only for a reflection um, point of view, but also so that we can work on our relationship with you and hopefully start taking the right steps in the right direction. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <music>